Good morning, everybody. It is a early morning, December 28-ish, 9-ish. I got a lot to do today, so uh, I won't be videoing a ton of it because I want to just knock it out. I'm ready to get this thing on the road. I'm sick of it sitting here. Um, last video, I built that Holley Dominator mount for to go like behind the air snorkel, behind the air box of the Humvee. I did come up here the other night and work on it, and I didn't video it just because I wanted to get it done real quick. So let me show you what that looks like now and how it's going to work. And then today we're going to paint that, put the throttle cable on, uh, run the wiring harnesses for the EFI, a bunch of other stuff. So I'd like to get it ready to where all I have to do is wire it um, and put in the transmission and transfer case, hook up the linkage, rock out. So there's the mount now. I have put in rib nuts where the Holley Dominator will mount. I've drilled these holes as access points for um, where I'm going to mount it to the actual Humvee because I'm going to rib nut the Humvee and then I'll just go through here with a socket to uh, attach and detach because I figured I won't have to put this on and off very often. Um, so that just needs to be painted. I do need to set it up and mount it first to make sure I've got all the holes where I want them but I'm going to go ahead and start on um, getting this prepped because before I do this, let me show you. Before I mount that, I'm going to cut, you can see how the heater hose is kind of kinked back. So I'm going to cut off a few inches of that, redo this one, put these uh, hose clamps where they're a little easier to get because that mount's going to kind of cover up this bottom heater hose. Uh, so let me start working on that. So quick update guys, I've got the mount put onto the Humvee. Just showing you what that looks like. So, whoa, my mount just screwed up there. So I've drilled these larger holes, like I said, so the socket can fit through, deep wall socket. I've rib nut the body, that way this mount can go on. So what I have to test now is when I bolted this down, did I warp it to where these holes don't match up and then I'll have to start from scratch because I should have mounted it and then done the holes for the, the Holly ECU. Um, it's definitely strong, like it's not going anywhere. It's not really going to twist or anything. It's the the Holly Dominator does have rubber feet, so it'll it has a little bit of wiggle room. But I'm going to go ahead and mount the Holly, show you guys that, make sure it fits right, and then we're going to take it back off, paint it, um, plug all these holes with some uh, seal seam sealer, and then make sure all this is watertight coming down through here. Worst case, it's all aluminum, and if it does go behind here, it's just going to go behind the. Um, floor mat which is you can't see because it's so dark but it's this material here it'll just the water will... so quick update guys i've got the mount put onto the humvee just showing you what that looks like so whoa my mount just screwed up there so i've drilled these larger holes like i said so the socket can fit through deep wall socket i've rib nut the body that way this mount can go on so what i have to test now is when I bolted this down, did I warp it to where these holes don't match up and then I'll have to start from scratch because I should have mounted it and then done the holes for the, the Holly ECU. Um, it's definitely strong. Like, it's not going anywhere. It's not really going to twist or anything. It's the, the Holly Dominator does have rubber feet, so it'll, it has a little bit of wiggle room. But I'm going to go ahead and mount the Holly show you guys that, make sure it fits right, and then we're going to take it back off, paint it, um, plug all these holes with some uh, seal, seam sealer, and then make sure all this is watertight coming down through here. Worst case, it's all aluminum, and if it does go behind here, it's just going to go behind the um, floor mat, which is, you can't see because it's so dark, but it's this material here. It'll just, the water will go between this and that, so... It's not that big a deal, but um, I have plenty of clearance as you can see. The air box will come up to here, it gives me room to run the wires, hook it up. It'll be good. And then I'm going to try to build like a cover that kind of matches this, that'll cover the ECU, go to the air box, mount to the air box. And then that way I won't have to worry about tires flinging up mud and getting all over it and stuff like that. So we must go on. So quick update guys, I've got the mount put onto the Humvee, just showing you what that looks like. So, whoa, my mount just screwed up there. 
So I've drilled these larger holes, like I said, so the socket can fit through, deep wall socket. I've rib nut the body, that way this mount can go on. So what I have to test now is when I bolted this down, did I warp it to where these holes don't match up and then I'll have to start from scratch because I should have mounted it and then done the holes for the, the Holly ECU. Um, it's definitely strong, like it's not going anywhere. It's not really going to twist or anything. It's the the Holly Dominator does have rubber feet, so it'll it has a little bit of wiggle room. But I'm going to go ahead and mount the Holly, show you guys that, make sure it fits right, and then we're going to take it back off, paint it, um, plug all these holes with some uh, seal, seam sealer, and then make sure all this is watertight coming down through here. Worst case, it's all aluminum, and if it does go behind here, it's just going to go behind the. Um, floor mat which is you can't see because it's so dark but it's this material here it'll just the water will go between this and that so it's not that big a deal but um i have plenty of clearance as you can see the air box will come up to here it gives me room to run the wires hook it up it'll be good and then i'm going to try to build like a cover that kind of matches this that'll cover the ecu go to the air box mount to the air box and then that way I won't have to worry about tires flinging up mud and getting all over it and stuff like that. So we must go on. All right, so there it is. Now I think I have a problem. So it looks great. It works great. Um, I probably should have moved it that way about an inch or two because as you can see, if the air box is literally right here, I don't think I'm going to have enough room to plug these in. And that is a problem. Bigger problem than I'd like to deal with right now. But I'm going to put the air box on, lift it up, or get up here, look down, see if I have enough room. I'll probably go get the harness, plug it in. Because it may be where I can plug it in and go down and then over. I like the way it turned out, though. It really is nice. It's away from the motor. It's tucked kind of in a corner because the air box is going to be here. And then I can build a shroud that goes over and down and covers the computer and the wiring and all that stuff and probably make it somewhat, you know, mud and dirt and water resistant. <laughs> but, uh, all right, let me put the airbox on and I'll see what we got. So I'm either super lucky or it's still not going to work because I have a good bit of room down there. I've got tons of room under where the curve is so I can run the wiring, but it's either going to be where I have to move it up about an inch or when people ask me i'm going to be like i'm just that good yeah clearance is clearance is my specialty but see how i'll be able to like rivet onto the air box and then build something that comes out and down and kind of covers the connectors i might even be able to um bring it around here so that'd be kind of cool but let me go get the harness. I'm going to kind of throw it over the motor and just get the main points and click it in and see, see if I can do it. So yeah, I totally measured for that clearance. It was on purpose, 100%. Let me see if I can get a better angle for both of us, really. Um, can you see uh, that better? There we go. So it is tight, which is good. Um, it would have been okay to have it a little higher up, honestly. I'll have to um, figure out some guards for that wiring just so it doesn't chafe on the air box kind of thing. And um, yeah, it's it looks good. I'm okay with it. I like it. So it only is those two, which is the main engine harness, of course. And then probably one more for the transmission. The rest will be dead plugs. And then back here, that little blue thing you see, that's for the USB cable for programming so that hopefully won't be unplugged unless that's what powers my dash so we shall see we can also run some wires up here but yeah i'm i'm happy with it um really happy with it i think it's nice when you sit right here you can't really even tell it's there you have to kind of come up with the truck and look over and be like oh shoot he has a holly dominator um all right so i'm going to disassemble everything Work on the heater hoses. So you can see how they're kind of hidden under and for maintenance, that's gonna be horrible because I don't wanna to to pull everything off if something leaks or is wrong. And then I've got to paint the mount 
and then I'm gonna start working on getting this huge wiring harness on the computer and we can go from there. Now I'm gonna get started on the new throttle cable. Uh, this is a throttle cable for an LS1. It just means that it has this gold, uh, where's the camera? Gold thing on the front that locks into the throttle body. Um, it is set, I believe, by a set screw somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe it's just soldered in there. That can't be the case. It's a hex head inside that hole right there. You undo it and you can move that because you cut these to make them fit. But what I had to do is this side um, that clips to the actual pedal. The pedal comes through the firewall in the Humvee. And I had to kind of grind this open a little bit more, but I'm hoping I can take the one off the current uh, throttle cable because I, I used one of these for the sniper system and then just slide it onto here so I don't have to modify this one and I'll have an extra. The part number for this is TC1000LS16UJ, which just means I think it's 160 inches, or no, it's 60 inches, which gives me plenty of room to make sure that... Um, I have enough space to run this where I need to run it or want to run it and then you just cut off the excess and uh, you're good to go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just opening this up just to check it, make sure nothing's wrong with it. And then I'm going to go pull the old throttle cable off of the Humvee. Let me get this undone and um, try to pull, I need this off of my current throttle cable and I think it does just come off if I undo this entire cable, unbuilt or not unbuilt it, but take it apart. And then this thing, this is why I had to buy this throttle cable because of that little thing right there. So it's all adjustable, it'll be fine, um, pretty easy to do, but let me go ahead and inspect this and then go get the one off of the truck that's currently on there. So what I've done here is I've taken the cable housing off of the cable. Now you want to be real careful while it's off. You don't want to kink it or anything. And uh, you know, you have to take some of the parts off. Just remember where they go. This, like I said, is the piece that goes into the throttle body. The whole reason I had to get a new throttle cable. And then this part is the one I had to modify. So I'm hoping uh, once I take these pins out and can move that out of the way, I can just slide this off this one, slide it onto the new one or slide the old one off of that one, slide it onto this one, and then I won't have to modify anything. And I'll have an extra one. So let me do that and I'll be right back. So here's the difference. This is the one off the Humvee, and that is the factory low car. And so I don't know if it's gonna focus, but it's just slight, I mean, ever so slight difference. On the caliper, we're talking Um, at the pin point 5.82 or 5.8 millimeters and on the one from low car at that same point we are roughly 4.8 so it's a millimeter difference is uh, what I had to do to get this to work so now what I'm going to do is pull this cable out it's not a big I mean I can't show you the whole thing on the video but um, it's not huge, so what I need to do is get this wire, pull it out completely, and now I can swap that for that. And that one actually looks, eh, they're the same. Yeah, so I'll use that one now. So let me go ahead and put the new uh, thing on there, get it all put back together, and I'll get with you when I'm putting it in the truck. All right, so before I show you under the truck, here's what the cable, I've reassembled it. It's really long and that's kind of on purpose because you put it in, you know, this will go into that. These two, good Lord, pay attention. Um, these two nuts will sandwich the throttle bracket right here. And then that will go down and grab this throttle body and allow me to pull the throttle open. So let me show you under the truck of how I got it onto the Humvee because I think that's going to help y'all most for those of you who that are doing this. All right, so I know it's dark, but this is the throttle for the Hummer. My bushing's worn out, so it does that. But this is where that clips in. Whoa. Um, that's why I had to grind it because this is a little fatter, I guess, than factory Chevrolets. But that goes, and then up there... I don't know if I can get that zoomed in or not, but 
there's a bracket that holds this wire and so I just drilled that bracket out and uh, that's how I got the throttle cable mounted and so now when I pull push the throttle pedal um, it pulls the cable I do need to replace that bushing but um that's it I mean that's the the gist of it so I'll show it to you from the top too just so you can kind of see the bracket that I drilled into all right so here's the bracket comes off goes down this is the wire this is the throttle cable let's see if I can zoom in a little bit and how I just drilled that bracket and uh, that was it super easy and then it just goes up and goes around and it'll swing around and attach to the throttle cable bracket and then to the throttle body and we'll be done so that's the throttle cable and it's just that low car part number cut to fit super easy hey guys it's obviously another day got a quick haircut um, it's been probably three or four days since I recorded that last clip um, I got to a point where I just needed to head to the house and I didn't have the parts I needed so I was at a, a stopping point so let me show you what or where we're at now because I did finish up the throttle cable I've got it hooked up I did plug in the wiring harness it turned out really nice I, I like it a lot um, and then I'll kind of show you the progress and where we're gonna go and what we're gonna do today because today we're gonna get a lot done um, a lot of things finalized and done so let me show you all right so as I said right here I've got the throttle cable um, done I do have to tighten that nut which I'll probably forget about uh, it ends up super short uh, which is great. It just comes up like I just showed you in the last couple clips and comes over here That's the temp sensor. I got that installed. I will tell you when I did the wiring harness um, Both knock sensors driver and passenger side weren't there. I guess they were taken out when they put that sniper in so I um, I installed the knock sensors. I needed a different oil pressure sensor. The oil pressure sensor is actually off of a 2002 um, Corvette I believe it's 2002 Corvette and then the intake air temperature sensor which obviously it didn't have because the sniper didn't need that um, that's off a 2000 Corvette so everything's LS1 but I've got all that in the wiring harnesses in as you can see here I have the mount for the uh, computer on I have put in some um, seam sealer over the holes so we don't get any leaks there I'm not going to put the computer actually on yet. I will show you real fast. Let me get it. Oh, what that's going to look like. I think I might have already shown you, but that's kind of the way it will sit and the air intake goes on. It's a really tight but good clean fit. And today what we're going to do, now that that is all in, and the reason I had to wait on that was this uh, heater valve back here. The heater valve that was on there was a plastic it was kind of big oversized and I wanted the original metal one so that is what that is and um, I got it from Summit actually it was like four bucks or something eight bucks it was super cheap and then I did all new hose clamps with those really nice hose clamps that I like for the heater uh, core because it was leaking a little bit before and I want to make sure it's not because to get to it now I have to take this thing off for the most part and it's just pain in the butt but everything's hooked up i put in new stainless steel clamps along there i've got to get a new hood mount which i've already ordered from hummer parts guy so i got a lot going on today what i'm going to do is i'm got to remove the battery tray because i need to get the transmission lines which i've already bought and kind of bent a little bit off camera sorry um the way i'm going to run my transmission cooler lines is i'm going to go from the output of the transmission up to the factory line up here but then instead of hooking into the transmission cooler, I'm going to take it over with one of these lines I've been up, um, go over to the oil cooler, adapt from dash six to dash 10 so I can go in the oil cooler, out of the oil cooler, back over to the transmission cooler, and then back into the transmission. So honestly, the, tr the transmission cooler will be the size of a radiator. So it's going to be massive. It's going to have a ton of fluid in it. It should be just super cool. After I burn out the last transmission, I'm a little gun shy on all that. So I'm just over doing overkill with it. Um, I know just in the hard line, I've got about eight or nine feet of line. And then going from there to the transmission, probably another eight or nine feet. And then the cooler is literally the entire size from top to bottom um, of this. So 
I'll show you a little bit of that as we do it. I've got one line completely done. I believe it's this one. Yeah, it's, it fits good. It's gonna mount right here on the fan shroud like that. And then hoses will hook to the actual coolers themselves. What I do have to do on these is I have to do what's called a bubble flare or a hose flare, which allows the hose to slip on the end and uh, allows the clamp to kind of grab onto something so the hose doesn't slip off. So I know I've said a lot, we're gonna do a lot, but let's go ahead and get started and um, let's play with the bubble flare and flare this hard line so we can go ahead and get the transmission lines hooked up. All right, so real fast, this is the cutoff hard line for 3 8 transmission cooler line that I'm using it for. And the bubble flare does that to it. So it puts a, a, a nice little bead on the end of it and it's just like factory i even went under the truck grabbed the calipers uh the factory transmission lines have the same exact bubble on the end so um i'm gonna go ahead and do this line and i'll show you how it's done all right so i have already cut off the end i've deburred it i've sanded it i've done all that stuff because the reason i have found you sand these a little bit make them a little rough is so they stick into this tool a little bit better. Now this is just a um, bubble flaring or hose flaring kit. So you find the size hole you need. There's about a thousand videos on YouTube on how to do this part. Um, so you line it up, get it where you need it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Um, get it where you need it. And then it comes with this tool, which tells you how high to make it. So that will give you the clearance you need. And then once you have it where you want it, just make sure it's straight. Go ahead and get it a little snug on both of these. Check it one more time. We've come down just a little bit, so let me fix that. Come on. Let's see if that's better. Perfect. Tighten it up again. Now being that this line has like a coating or a painting on it, or a paint, um, I've had to really tighten these ears down. So I just use this little tool for leverage and go back and forth until you can't really tighten it anymore. You just wanna be careful uh, not to break these ears off. All right, and then um, it comes with this die. Let me show you a different one. For different size tubing, the, uh, the tube goes on that end and then that end threads into this tool. So you just thread it on and now you can crank it down. So let me put it on here, put it inside the, the hole if it fits and then well looks like do, 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 do. let me I don't know if this is I just didn't clean it good enough or what but yeah it looks like I'm gonna fight it a little bit there we go it's in there now all right and now all you do is you just it's gonna be hard to video this but now you just twist the lever on the top. You can put this in a vise as well. But what you want to do is while you twist it, the issue I've had is you'll see down at the bottom, this tube will start to move down. It'll start to push. That means these aren't tight enough. So we'll see. Let me, and I'm just gonna do it. Ugh, let me widen the camera. There we go. I'm just gonna do it enough until I can see that bubble has become Factory uh, It'd be a easy task if it were in the vise um, And you can do that by just getting your caliper and checking every now and again It's got a little bit of ways to go uh, Now if you were doing an actual bubble flare you'd want to run this all the way down 
but being that this is just for hose, I'm just trying to match uh, the factory. And there you go. That's going to be it. So I'm going to do just a little bit more to be certain. And I'm going to back it out. And what you see is it has made a bubble on the top of that pipe or that line. So now when I loosen it up, I've got this nice, if you can see that, but nice bubble. And then I'm just going to take my sandpaper just so I don't contaminate any transmission fluid or anything because these are coated. I would prefer uncoated stainless steel, but it's fine. That's it. Then I'm going to get my cutter here and just deburr it one more time for goodness sakes. And there you go. Bubble flare. Goes right over the top, hose clamps, then it has nowhere to go. So that's it. Now let me do the other line and we'll get going. So let me show you the plan of how we're going to run the transmission cooler. So the transmission obviously has an out, comes out of the front, and then goes back into the back. So it's going to come out in the front, come up towards the front of the vehicle. That line is right here, and then it would normally go into the bottom of the transmission cooler. So the transmission cooler is like from here to here. Well, the oil cooler is the rest of that entire cooler. So we're connecting the two. And then I've got my power steering cooler here. You're just using the factory. Now, when I come up from here, I want this to actually not go into the transmission cooler. I want it to come over here and go all the way over to the oil cooler, which is on the other side. I'll show you that in a second. So for right now, I got to take this hose off, which I Oedeker clamped, not a problem, just snap it off. Um, and then get a new piece of rubber hose and go from here to here. And then that will start the direction to go over to the oil cooler, which is on the other side of the truck, but utilizes all of these coils and should keep the transmission nice and cool, no matter what. All right, so let me show you what I've done here. You can see all the transmission lines. I'll kind of explain that in a second. I've got the hard lines mounted right on top of the um, fan shroud. So you've got a line that comes from the transmission, which is, you know, the normal factory lines right there. They go up, they come into the lower point on the, um, which was this one, but now this line runs up to one of these hard lines at the top. The hard line runs over, goes into the oil cooler, which I'll show you in a second. The oil cooler comes back, does this nice little uh, 180 bend that I have here, the 180 bend pushes into the bottom of the trans cooler and then comes out the top of the trans cooler just like it has always been and then goes back down into the rear of the transmission where it can cool um, kind of the pump. So let me show you the driver's side where the oil cooler used to be and now it is the transmission cooler. All right, so here it is. There's the access panel. These two ports were the oil cooler. Now I've got dash 10 to dash 6 AN fittings that run to the 3 8 uh, cooler line. And then that comes up right here and then ties into the hard lines and the hard lines runs over to the other cooler. So this thing is completely plumbed. Transmission is ready to accept its uh, cooler lines, but of course I haven't put the transmission in the truck yet, so that's still to come. But I'm happy with it. I'm really happy with it. It's all plumbed from the lowest point to the toppest, or the, the toppest, the highest point. So air should uh, come out pretty easy. And the last thing I have to do is check fitment of the battery tray. And if I have to cut it, I'll cut it. So let me go check that. All right, battery tray is back in. Um, we're not rubbing too bad. There's a little bit here. Um, nothing really down through there. 
I don't know if you can see. Let's see if you can see down in there. I'm trying. Nothing. So the biggest problem is this giant lip, which is here for um, like a, a flap to go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut about an inch and a half off of this because all I need, I plan on using this flap right here. And all I need is, you know, not even an inch to get that on there. So I'm just going to measure to however much I need to get that flap on that piece, cut it, and that'll give me all kinds of room for these lines to run. Um, even if I just notch it starting like right here, I think it would make way better access to those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that battery tray off and start hacking away at it. So I have got it back on. Look at that. Made a huge difference. I can get my hand in there now. I uh, just used a cutoff wheel, slice straight down, notch this, uh, ground it all real smooth. Just got to take it off and paint it. But I love that it gives me all that room for the uh, lines and then I've still got room. I'm going to put that um, kind of guard from the other, from the factory support. And then while I was at it, oh, I went ahead and put this thing together. So. This was, how does it go like this? This was part of the piece that goes here from the factory. And now I can put it in and bolt it to that and give myself another kind of factory style mud, um, I guess blocker thing. So it just doesn't, uh, inner fender, I guess is what we would call that. So I'll have this inner fender, which it won't stay, I don't think. I'll have this inner fender that covers the batteries. It actually comes out and then up. And then I'll have this flap to kind of help support that. The only thing I won't have is anything up here in the front to block anything that kind of gets thrown up right there, which I've got a mount for the factory one right here. So I might be able to make something um, out of aluminum or something that just covers that up. I may be able to cut the snout off of what I got and use it, but that'll be, I mean, once the headlight and stuff comes down from the hood, that'll cover up a good bit of it. So it would take out the headlight before it ever hit the radiator or the coolers, but whatever. Um, so it's coming along good, man. I'm, I really like this. That just, that turned out way better. Um, now that I've cut it and I can still have the support for the mud flap thing and the Cooler lines look good. So yeah, now, now I have to start fabrication on this, which last time it didn't have a one inch um, male nipple on the bottom of it. I tapped and threaded that. And now this has to sit in here, kind of like, probably like this. And I'll have the radiator run to it. Uh, the radiator filler hose, which is one inch hose. Oh, that's right there. That'll run to it. And then I'm probably going to run my steam port down to where I had the thermostat before in the uh, water pump. And then at that point, I can fill it with fluid. I can run, do the start doing the wiring, put in the computer, put in the air intake. I've got a measure for this because I got to buy a silicone 90 and then I'm just going to go from the silicone 90 into a piece of pipe and then a piece of pipe into, um, oh, and then into the flex hose that I had before, which is sitting on top of the transmission and I can fill it with radiator fluid, put in that, put the computer, start the wiring, which will take a while. Um, and then I can put in the transmission. And once I get the transmission and I can run it, I can't drive it, but I can crank it, tune it a little bit, see how it's running. And then once all that's done, put the transfer case, get the drive shafts put in and drive it, which I am so anxious to do. I'm excited about it. Um, all right, guys. So that's going to be it for today. I'm not going to have time to start fabricating that up, but um, that'll be in the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and uh, I appreciate y'all very much.